Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video of Fox Flix on Popcross Studios. Today we're watching them turn Disney princesses into new demons. Yes, this was pre-recorded in October, so it's before Halloween, but by the time you're seeing this, it's November. So, hey, happy Thanksgiving! I don't think it would feel right to go through all of October this year without doing a demon episode. I did the very first demon episode on this channel in October of last year with phobias as demons, which spawned oh, a whole cool. new series, even led to a new multiverse tales character, who technically oh, narrates these cool. episodes, but I don't really do a special voice for her. Then it eventually led to the dinosaurs as demon series, which has also been very popular. But today cool. it's time to try something new. Finally work in some pop culture stuff. I'm going to take Disney princesses and turn them into demons. Let's get into it, shall we? Let's Yeah, let's see what you can like, do. If you want, subscribe. If you feel like, I wonder what but either way, is gonna enjoy be the show. Fight. Demon fight? Many have heard the tales oh, of ghosts oh. being spewed. Sorry, hold on folks, I forgot. There we go, now you can see the princess just as well as me. Boss up, Jasmine, let's go. It's remaining on Earth with unfinished business. Well, I can't oh, verify so those tales as true, they do bear a striking resemblance to the origin of a certain breed of demon. One that, thankfully, long term, has proven to be a failed experiment on the part of the demon queen, Fear herself. You see, when a human is on the brink of death and their soul is beginning to slip away, their mind and body is essentially powering down, no longer useful as a vessel to the soul. Yeah, but separation. But at that moment, it is vulnerable to being corrupted. Fear herself has gone to some bodies in this position and warped them into demons, just as the soul has departed, leaving no guiding conscience for the body and mind. The body and mind will then remain right. as a monstrous version of its past self, fueled by whatever rage was within them upon their death. They'll then do as oh, most other demons of fear do, bad. hunt and torment. One of the first she attempted this with was a young Arabian woman named Jasmine, who was the heir to a vast fortune she was likely to inherit from her father. Ooh, She'd lived a life of luxury tail. since nice. birth, but had few friends, aside from her loving pet tiger, Raja. She longed to take a portion of her wealth and see the world, to meet new people, but her father was a stern and very old-fashioned man who demanded <laughs> she be wed before inheriting Must a be cent to a or prince. being permitted to travel. This problem seemed to have been solved as she'd met a charming young man named Aladdin, who'd traveled much himself and claimed eager to show her the world with his own vast fortune. Though, he always kept very vague about where he'd acquired his fortune. <laughs> Upon their marriage, yeah, however, she learned about the, the dark truth. Not simply that his wealth was a facade, but one created by a notorious crime lord who went by the pseudonym, The Jinn. He lent Aladdin oh, all manner that. of cars and clothing to appear rich so as to be a suitable match in the eyes of Jasmine's father. Once they were wed, Aladdin would take her out of the picture and split her wealth with the djinn. Ooh, Unfortunately, oh. Jasmine only learned That's this after dull. Aladdin had starved her tiger, whipped Raja from behind a cage, and set the famished and enraged animal into a room with her. Her oh. past bond with the tiger wasn't That's enough to good. placate it in this state, and Raja tore her apart. But, as Damn. her soul slipped from her body, fear stepped in. In a swirling cloud of black and teal smoke, Jasmine's body was revived into a monstrous form. Her hands shifted into tiger claws, reflecting the nature of her death. Her flowing hair became a scorpion stinger with which to stab her prey in the back. She grew extra nice. sets of eyes with which to see into the minds of her potential prey and always be able to spot their lies. In her new state, the first thing she did, of course, was torment and kill Aladdin. I mean, thereafter she moved on I to the djinn and all those who followed him. From there, her charge as a demon was to seek out traitors, specifically those who'd lie to the people they claim to care for. So, if you're a notorious liar who begins to see a faint cloud of teal smoke lingering around you, I'd suggest <laughs> you embrace a new policy of honesty fast lest you become the newest victim of the demon, Jasmagrin. Jasmagrin? Not Little shout bad. out to a subscriber, Finn Over, whose comment helped influence the way I wrote the lore for this episode. My original concept for the Disney princess demons was going to be kind of like the dinosaur demons episode, where all the dinosaur demons are servants to a dinosaur that's a representation of the fear hmm. of dinosaurs. In this episode, I originally I thought of that. making the Disney princess demons 
servants created by a demon that represents the fear of beautiful women, which is a phobia that people have asked me to work with. And I thought that was kind of a cool concept, hmm. but I eventually the realized that the royalty? problem with it was it was going to get way too repetitive, both in terms of story and design. And I didn't want to make all these characters just, you know, focused around them being attractive. Could be interesting yeah, for yeah, one or two I, stories I and designs, that. but long term it wouldn't really work. This felt yeah, a lot cooler, and one way to flesh wouldn't. out their designs Short a little term, bit more maybe, and make sure they're one. varied between all the different demons in this episode is I pulled in elements from other parts of the movies that these characters are from. So with Jasmine, obviously, I worked in elements of the genie and elements of her tiger, Raja. I'm very pleased mm -hmm. with this one as the first one, but I think they get even cooler from here. So let's oh, yeah, take a look at the result. Jasmogren is actually really good. I gotta give you props for that one. Another tale of fears humans uh, turned dark is that of Ariel. Ariel, who lived on a small island with her father and half-dozen sisters. Where they lived was a frequent tourist attraction, and Ariel was always fascinated by those who came to visit, and what they brought with them from the rest of the world. Any time a tourist left something behind on the beaches, she'd take it, and she had amassed a vast collection of trinkets. <laughs> One of her of favorites, though, did. was a small bust of her favorite singer, Eric Anderson. She listened oh, to his music hey, constantly Abbott. and sang along to it, arguably singing even better than he did, as Ariel had a phenomenal voice. One day, a she miracle really seemed to occur, as Eric was coming on his private yacht to her island to play a small show. She managed to get in, and during a song where Anderson left space for the crowd to sing along, Ariel's voice rang through. Amazed by her, he brought her up on stage nice. to sing with him, and the whole audience was floored. Her performance became a viral sensation, and she and Eric became very close on his remaining time on the island. That's much good to, to heal. the displeasure of Eric's agent. Ursula Wetchers had worked oh, tirelessly it was gonna be for the years to get Eric's career off the ground, but now that it was soaring, she still couldn't relax. She was constantly in fear of anything that could tear him down or potentially upstage him. When Eric asked Ariel to go on tour with him and be a part of his world, Ariel was ecstatic, even more so when she learned their adventure would all start with a trip on his boat. Nice. Ursula, however, was livid. Enough so oh, to do Ursula. something truly oh, vile. Steel. The boat hit a stormy night, and while Eric and his entourage were asleep, Ursula managed to lure Ariel out onto deck and push her overboard. No one could hear Ariel's screams for help through the storm, and it wasn't long before the crashing waves overtook her, and she began to sink into the depths. The Demon Queen found it, her as she up. sank and reformed her body and mind into the demon now called Ariangla, a ravenous merbeast that seeks after those who have achieved great wealth and success, but who also have great anxiety around hoarding and maintaining it. She first hunted down Eric's ship and devoured Ursula but left Eric be, as she That's sensed good. no fear in him of losing the success he'd achieved. His aura That's portrayed good. that he truly appreciated all he'd acquired. Still out there, Ariel now often hunts at Goodbye, sea, luring Osla. ships to her with you her still magnificent bitch. voice. But she can also traverse onto land when need be, able to shift her dark tail into a set of legs. She'll torment her prey in similar ways to other demons of the deep waters, and she serves mm, as a cool. grim reminder of why a focus on gratitude for what you do have is far more beneficial than a fear of losing it's it. It's always better to have an attitude of gratitude. Now this was my one favorite one to make of the episode, well and it's made me ask once again, why have I not done a Sea Monsters episode? I've been saying it for... A year, maybe years, <laughs> uh, plural, that I need to do a Z Monster episode. Why and not? Besides do the it Beast before Chronicles October, too, man. where I introduced a narrator perfect for doing Sea Monster episodes. I haven't actually done a Sea Monster focused episode, and I don't even currently have one on my schedule. But you know, it's probably gonna come eventually because I love drawing sea creatures. This one, I was actually a little bit October, uncertain like I if said. I was going to do it because I have actually done a kind of monstrous version of Ariel. A couple times, actually. Once a long time ago in the old Disney Princess Kaijus episode. But more specifically, oh, cool. I was thinking when I took Disney princesses and turned them into different supervillains in different universes. I did Ariel in DC Universe and made her hmm. like a creature from the trench. So I wasn't sure if I'd be that. able to make this different enough, but Some kind once of, uh, I got Atlantis. started, I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is a very different kind of creature. Definitely. Let's go. 
Who's next to get demonized? Now you may wonder why Rapunzel. I claimed earlier these demons to be a failed mm. experiment on the part of Fear herself. You see, the Demon Queen greatly underestimated the souls departing her world and the connection that would remain oh, like with their Sedusa bodies and from, minds uh, even Girls. after their vessels Monster had hail. been demonically warped. The first demon to prove this was once a girl named Rapunzel, who, for the majority of her young life, believed herself to be very ill and in need of remaining home with her overbearing and protective mother. Her mother would never let her leave home and did all she could to convince Rapunzel that her illness meant she must stay away from other people. Hmm. Her mother would spend like hours a, a day combing from, uh, Rapunzel's it. hair and telling her of the horrors her illness could wreak on others stating that only her mother was immune due to their shared genes. This was the only life Rapunzel had ever known, and her mother didn't grant Ooh, her internet access, arms. so That's she something. simply believed it to be normal. Has Outside no of their arms. home, Rapunzel's mother had a reputation for being unusual and unpleasant with all those she crossed. Because of this, local teenagers had concocted rumors about her secretly being a serial killer. This led to a boy who went by Flynn, but was truly named Eugene, to try and prove <laughs> himself brave by breaking into Rapunzel's home while her mother was out. He, of course, was alarmed to find Rapunzel herself, as her mother had never told anyone about her. Rapunzel was horrified that being so close to him could kill Flynn, but that was quickly disproven. When, when Rapunzel had happened. explained her life situation, it spurred memories in Eugene of a crime documentary he'd grudgingly sat through with some friends about a woman with a mental illness called Munchausen Syndrome by proxy. There it this is. is where a caregiver lies, either to others or even to their child, about their child being gravely ill, and sometimes will even harm the child to further sell the lie of the ailment. The reason for doing so can vary, but some do it to keep the child dependent, and at home. Mm -hmm. This fact struck a dark chord with Rapunzel. Putting all the pieces together of her life and how they aligned with the story Flynn told, Rapunzel was mortified, but barely had a moment to process as her mother stormed into the room with an axe. She'd taken it from the garage after arriving home and noticing the break-in. Rapunzel tried to stop and oh, confront no. her mother, but the woman furiously swung her blade at the intruder. Rapunzel stepped in front, and her arm was stricken from her body. Flynn Damn. ran from the home for safety, but Rapunzel's mother chased after him, desperate to keep him from telling anyone about her daughter. But a manic, grown woman chasing a teenager down the street with an axe quickly drew attention. Oh yeah, no shit. As Rapunzel lay bleeding to death on her bedroom floor, her mother was arrested. As others in these tales have been, Rapunzel in her dying moments was visited by fear and transformed. Her hair that her mother loved to comb so dearly grew out further and became amorphous tentacles, able to shift into various tools of torment. Her other All arm too fell from her body, but her hair more than made up for the missing appendages. She visited her mother in a prison cell, and as her hair restrained the woman, ready to subject her to whatever tortures came to the demon's mind, she was stopped. Her mother cried and swore she loved Rapunzel and just wanted to keep her daughter safe. And while the woman's actions had been horrific and cruel, Rapunzel did believe that she had had her own twisted version of good intent. I mean, you see, when fear yes, saved this mind and body, despite altering on. them into a demonic state, she left open the vessel for the soul's return. Rapunzel's soul, though now having to fend off the overwhelming ego mind of a demon version of her old self, was able to take residence once more in her body, and now hmm. does all she can to push her demonic urges to be used for good. She hunts down those in similar situations to her Not own bad. upbringing and terrifies the so-called caregivers until they yield and reveal their treachery and lies. In any case she can, she helps the caregiver get the help they need, but of course focuses <laughs> on the target of their abuse, freeing the child from the false shackles that Rapunzel herself was bound to for so long. Not bad. This one was actually nice. Like the spirit's honestly fighting back for the control. This final demon has an even stronger bond Don't tell me that was the name. soul, which remains within it to keep it from like causing Moana? any great harm. Prior huh. to being altered, Moana was a young woman from Samoa. She loved nothing more than the water and spent as much time as she could in it, despite protests from her father. 
His displeasure of her seeking more and more time in the water was exacerbated further as she claimed an interest in taking up surfing. At that, he tried to ban her from going in the water altogether, which she only learned of later from her mother walk. was because he himself had taken an inexperienced friend surfing as a boy. Samoa's surfing is not for beginners, as its rips can be very fast and forceful and there are many shallow sharp reefs. This combination led to the death of her father's friend. Mm -hmm. Even having heard like this, movie. however, Moana didn't care. She felt called to the sea, and would do whatever she had to to explore all the adventures and thrills it could provide. She decided if her father wouldn't permit her to surf, she'd just have to go try when he couldn't see. Moana got a surfboard and went out at night, quickly oh, learning no. how much more dangerous the waves were, with nobody around to see her crash into the swirling waters. Moana's Never overconfidence night, was people. revealed to her too late, as not long after she set out, she was pulled under and grated along the reefs. Below. Ow, Soon her hooked. soul was observing her body from afar, slipping farther and farther away, but just before detaching, she felt her drowned and maimed vessel being altered. Moana's soul quickly soared back into her body, just as it finished being shifted by fear herself into a stony form with legs and hair made from the waters that had just taken her life. Hmm. She found her mind cool. now had a ravenous desire to hunt down her own father and any who'd try so hard to control others that they'd force them to drastic actions. The yearning to cause suffering of this demonic form was so strong that Moana allowed herself to get halfway back to her home before stopping and trying to override her mind's furious logic with the knowledge that despite his overbearing nature, her father had truly just wanted to protect her. In this case, I mean, the soul yeah, won over the mind and body. It is Moana's Recently, fault. the demon, now called Moetika, has met and aided the organization of which I was once a part, the Predator Coalition of Demon Hunters, to help hunt down other demons. And while controlling a demon mind can be incredibly trying for her at times, Moetika has consistently managed to do more good than harm. I'll admit, and I feel like this episode cool. I've done a really good job of keeping it focused enough on the Disney princess altered versions into demons, while also working in a bunch of original demon lore for anyone that is following the Multiverse Tales series and my demon episodes in general. Yeah, I think Doing I some, did you know, great. world building in the background of all of this. Because obviously these demons aren't really coming about in the same way as the other demons I've used in this series. I mean, they're still being created by another existing demon, but having them made <laughs> from a human with a soul that can reconnect to the body that's been altered, I think just it's adds a really interesting extra layer that I think will be really fun to play with in future demon episodes. Also, just on the side of Moana, I, I kind of thought this design was going to be a little bit too basic as I was doing it. I considered adding more watery arms or something, but eventually I was just like, you know what? Basic can look good if I just render it well. Basic can and I think look this good. does end up looking really cool, and I love working with Moana again because it's definitely in my top three favorite Disney movies probably with Encanto and Princess and the Frog. I worked in elements of Taka into her design and overall oh, I think yeah, this ended up looking really cool. And as always I, I hope you all agree. And all. Let's take a look. I'd say this one was good. The, the best one was definitely uh, Demon Ariel. Alright, I'm very eager to hear what you all think about the Demon series dipping into pop culture stuff. Is it something you want to see more of? And if so, leave me some suggestions. Yeah, if you are not? new to the channel, you might want to check out my phobias as demons, or elements as demons, or dinosaurs as demons. I'll just link the whole playlist of demon episodes, because honestly, it's one of my most consistent series quality-wise. But besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note. And the thought I want to what leave you people with today is a quote from Robin Sharma, which says that the beautiful thing about fear is when you run to it, it runs away. <laughs> I hope that's inspiring to someone like out there. Thanks it. so much for watching, everybody. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next episode on Friday. Goodbye. All right, and with that, folks, that is where we're going to end off today's episode. So, I'm, uh, I want you all to remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Down in the description will be a link to the original video. So, remember to support the original creator and all they do, and I'll see all of you folks Are you going next time when we flick on. Peace out.